All right, let's go ahead and get into these replays. I decided I'm going to bring back commentary for him. It's been a while. And we got a pretty good opening hand, even though it's a little bricky. Set the call by, special or two Melfies, and say, your move. They're playing that archetype I can't pronounce. They're doing shenanigans. I'm going to stop their shenanigans with the call by, get rid of that prank tops. Special summon some Melfies, do more shenanigans. Uh, this is probably the best one of that archetype, by the way, in the full deck profile. I'm probably going to be running at least two of it. If you guys are interested in that part of the deck. Because it makes... Um, it makes all their Venerce Lifts unable to be destroyed by card effect, which with this card would protect your Melfies. But anyway, we're just bouncing their stuff, doing Melfi things. Destroying their stuff, doing more Melfi things. Can't destroy it because of that card. But that's okay. It's our turn. We're going to go ahead and play our card. And they're going to destroy it because they're actually running the Grand Tusk Dragon. And we're just going to spam out our hand. We're going to say, here is our hand. Enjoy it. So we're going to hop here because now they can't take control of it. We're going to make the Melfies. They, for some reason, want to resolve my Melfi effect, which won't work. I'm going to bounce it, prank it tops, and I do things that destroy the mommy. I do more Melfi things. You can see all the spam. Recycling hop here. And bam. So just like that, we're in a little bit of a better place. Set things, make the raccoon, activate the raccoon effect, destroy the dragon. Just be like, Hey, and they're going to give up because now they know that I can do more than just spam that I can actually go on the offense. I feel kind of bad because some of the earlier players I played against in the event were gold and I was just like, they probably do not know how to deal with this. Um, but either way, it was very fun. So here is a much better hand. Play the hide and seek. Thumb of the puppy. I'm going to hold these two in case I need them. I don't know what they're running yet. And I just wanted to think I'm running Melfi. Uh, it turns out they're running Marinsis. And I'm like, yeah, no. It sucks they got rid of the doge effect though. They did a couple of Marinsis things. Must not have had a good hand because they couldn't finish it. But that's okay. So we're going to draw. We're going to normal summon our World Soul Carbon. We're going to get the one that lets us draw another card. We're going to discard that in the big one. Of course, they're going to max C, which is annoying. We're still going to bring the big one out anyway. And they're going to negate the effect. But that's okay, because now we have Goddess on field, and Goddess can really just do so much for the stack. So, we're going to get the Max C. They're going to stop me from getting the Special Summon, which is a little annoying. And they're going to start doing Marinsis things. And for some reason, they're just going to end on that board. And I have a good hand now, so I'm going to do things. They're going to maxi again. I'm getting real tired of being under maxi. So I'm very, pretty much just having to play slow and play safe. But that's okay. And yet another Imperm, but we can chain, so I don't know why they activate that. But that's gold in a nutshell. Oh, I know, that was somebody I was playing against who was actually in plat. Ah, huh, weird. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys another game that I played with this deck. It's a bit quicker. 
There was one variant of this where I was running the Ishizu card. Some people like it. I feel like it didn't add enough for the deck to really make it relevant. Oh, this was fun. This was trains. I remember this one now. I was like, hmm, I'm gonna beat up this train player. So we clog our hand with the double carbons. We stop the urgent schedule, but we don't because they have called by. And we just say, okay, here they are. Bring them out. That's fine. They're in contest. Get us the Wally. And so make that stronger and make it able to attack twice. We can get rid of their field that way. Go into Earth Charmer. Earth Charmer, steal their big thing. And then go into the Wally at the end of the turn. Because we know they're going to do shenanigans and we need to rebuild our hand because we're bad on card advantage right now. Or at least card advantage in hand. We have a lot of field presence. And so now we see the rail cannon, we're like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't know why they ashed, because they can't even use it, and if they did, I would have just done more shenanigans. But at that point, I was going to penny, and I was going to summon the synchro and bounce their Gustav Max back to the hand before they could use the effect. So this deck can do cool things. Let me know down below if you want to see me do a full version of it, not just for the event, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Alright guys, we're hopping in to a Melfi Ven Ver Nusloaf, I can never say it correctly, uh, deck list, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's made Attribute 4 really easy. I've already gotten past getting the Moai Head uh, Mate, which is pretty much what I wanted from the event. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Three max C to start. One, Colantosa, Col Mythical Beast of the Forest. So I see a lot of people run two of this card. I feel like you really only need one. Uh, maybe I'd run two outside the event because Called by the Grave is more pre prevalent. And I am probably going to explore this deck outside the event as well because there's more options with lighter darks that you can do. But it's a lot of fun. So if this card special summoned by the effect of a beast monster, you can target one card in the field to destroy that target. Simple as simple can be. Uh, then we have the one Hoppier Squadron. During your opponent's main phase, you can target one face up monster you control, special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon one synchro monster using only this card you control and that target. You can only use this effect of Hoppier Squadron once per turn. Uh, very good card. Next we have Melfi Fenny. If your opponent normal or special summons a monster, except during the damage step, or if an opponent's monster targets this card for an attack, you can return to the hand, then special summon one beast monster from your hand, except Melfi Fenny. During the end phase, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only use each effect of Melfi Fenny once per turn. So the effect special summon from hand, all the Melfis except for Penny have that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it is really great. The Vernusliff side of the deck lets you uh, swarm outside of the end phase, basically, and it also gives you draw power, this guy, the power to special summon stuff back from the grave, so if you have one of your Melfies in grave, you can recycle it easily. Um, I saw some people on Reddit saying they wanted to try this and they couldn't really make it work and that this engine didn't really add anything. I heavily disagree. I think this engine allowing you to swarm outside of your in phase and link ladder climb is really great um and we'll get into that in a bit next we have okay three melfi caddy if your opponent normally special summons a monster except during the damage step or if your opponent's monster targets this card for an attack and that's the activation condition for all the melfies besides penny and so just keep that in mind and we'll get to pennies in a bit you can return this card to your hand, add one beast monster from your deck to your hand, except to Caddy, and then as the end phase special summon effect. So Puppy, same conditions to trigger its effect. 
except Puppy lets you return it to the hand, then special summon one level two or lower beast monster from your deck, except Puppy. And these are all hard once per turns. So don't think you can just like Puppy, special Puppy, special Puppy. You can't do that. <clears throat> you can go Puppy, special Wally, and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, next, we're going to go to Pony. Same uh, condition trigger for the normal or special summon or uh, attacks it one of the th one of the three uh, you can return to your hand add one level two or lower beast monster from your graveyard to your hand and notice this beast monster not melfi monster you can recycle hop your squadron very easily this way that's pretty much the entire reason i'm running pony uh third we have wally same activation trigger and this is basically the same as dog except you can special summon two Melfis with different names from each other. Most people only run one Wally, I run two, it helps me see it quicker, it's a different Melfi name, it's all around a decent card. And then finally we have Penny. Penny is the one Melfi that doesn't have that, you can uh, special summon it from your hand during the in phase, and it also doesn't have a return effect that's triggered by your opponent summoning. What Penny does do though, if a face up beast monster you control was returned to your hand this turn. Except Penny. Quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. Immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon one synchro monster. Using this card, you control and Melfi monster or monsters in your hand. During the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one beast XYZ monster you control. Attach this card to its material. You can only use each effect of Melfi Penny once per turn. So notice that synchro summon one synchro monster. It's not locked into beast or Melfi or any of that. Uh, if I explore this deck outside the event, I'm probably going to try different uh, synchro monsters that you can summon with this. I've even seen someone uh, summon Baron de Floor off of this before, and it was very funny. Ash, to Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. And then now we're going to get to the Vernuslip part of the deck. So this one's Flowering Fields. Your opponent can't target other Vernuslip monsters you control with card effects. So you can discard this card in one monster or another Venerslip card and they pretty much all say that add another earth monster from your graveyard to your hand except this one and then special summon one earth monster from your graveyard you cannot activate non-earth monster effects for the rest of the turn so keep in mind that if you do this you're not going to be resolving any of your non-earth monster link or xyz's um next we have Thawing Mountains, you can discard, and so it has the same effect of all of them. Discard this card or one Verner Slip. Special summon one Earth Monster from your graveyard. Can't activate non Earth effects, but you can target uh, one Verner Slip monster you control. It can make a second attack during the battle phase each turn. So, being able to, each of them basically let you special summon from the grave. Uh, this one lets you add. An earth monster from your grave this one lets you draw another card this one lets you add an earth fairy monster from your deck to your hand and then special summon from the grave same discard conditions and next we have two world soul carbon you don't really need your normal summon in this deck so this is a decent card to run you contribute it uh add one earth fairy monster from your deck to your hand except earth soul world soul carbon if a fairy monster is sent to the graveyard while well, this card's in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can place this card on the top of your deck. You can only use one World Star Carbon effect per turn, only once that turn. Don't use the second effect that often. And then the next, Verner Slip, this guy, in addition to the uh, Earth Special Summon, lets you target one uh, Verner Slip monster you control. Its attack becomes doubled until the end of the turn. Then we have Vera, the Verner Slip Goddess. Once per turn, when a monster effect is activated by your opponent resolves, you control five or more earth monsters. You can negate that effect, and if you do destroy that card, you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. You can target one face of monster your opponent controls, take control of it, and if you do, it becomes earth. During your opponent's turn, you can target one earth monster in your graveyard, which includes any of your Melfi's, special summon it. Next, we have a nurse slip in full bloom. All monsters you control gain a thousand attack, but you control five or more earth monsters. You can only use each of the falling effects once per turn. You can banish one Vernerslip flowering buds from your hand or graveyard. 
In special summon one Varus the Goddess from your deck. If a monster you control, if a Varus the monster is special summoned from the graveyard, except during the damage step, you can target one monster on the field or in either graveyard and return it to the hand. So that effect is great to recycle. Then we have Melfi Hide and Seek. First time each beast monster you control be destroyed by a card effect, it is not destroyed. You can target three beast monsters in your graveyard with different names, shuffle them into the deck, and then draw one card. You can only use this effect of Hide and Seek once per turn. This is amazing to recycle. You only want to run one or it clogs. Next we have Venerslyf Corolla. All earth monsters you control are also Venerslyf monsters, which is convenient. Once per turn, if you would discard a Venerslyf monster, and one card to activate the effect of that Venerslip monster, you can only discard the Venerslip monster instead. And the next we have Melfi Staring Contest. So this lets you show your opponent a beast monster in your hand, and then add a Melfi monster with a different name from your deck or graveyard to your hand, and the revealed monster goes on the bottom of the deck. You can only use this effect of Melfi Staring Contest once per turn. And then at the start of your opponent's battle phase, you can reveal any number of Melfi monsters in your hand. Keep them revealed during this battle phase only. Monsters your opponent control lose attack uh, combined to the attack and defense of monsters revealed by this. Very useful. Two Call by the Grave. Two Infinite Imperm. One Venerous Lift and Changing Seasons. Target one Venerous Lift monster in your graveyard. Add it to your hand or special summon it during your opponent's turn, except the turn this was sent to the graveyard. If you have no cards in your hand, you can banish this card from your hand. Sorry, banish this card from your graveyard. Special summon as many version or slave monsters as possible, but with different names from your graveyard, but return them to the hand during the end phase. You can only use this effect once per turn. And finally, Venerosla and the Flower Buds, and I won't have to say that word anymore. <laughs> Target face-up cards your opponent controls, up to the number of earth monsters that were special summoned from the graveyard. Return earth monsters you control to your hand equal to the number of targets. And if you returned at least one to the hand, return the targeted cards to the hand. You can only activate one Venus Lip and Flower Buds per turn. This is the card you banish for the field spell. And then now we're going to get into the extra deck. But before we do that, I'm going to be right back. I'm getting pizza. Whew. All right, and I'm back to do the extra deck. I have not consumed delicious pizza yet. That's how excited I am to finish this deck profile. Uh, so first we have one Mary, sorry, three Mary Melfies, one tuner one plus one non-tuner monsters. If this card is special summoned, notice it's a special summon, not synchro summon. So if you special summon this from the grave with one of your Melfi effects or another card effect, uh, you will be able to trigger this effect. You can target one face of monster on the field, return it to the hand. If your opponent, normal or special, summons a monster except during the damage step, or if an opponent's monster targets this card for attack, you can return to the extra deck, then summon one Melfi XYZ monster from your extra deck. You can only use each effect to marry Melfi's once per turn. So, it's important to mention here, I'm not running Joyous Melfi's or Melfi of the Forest because I didn't know if I was going to like this event for, I'm sorry, I didn't know if I was going to like this deck after the event. Uh, turns out I do, and I am going to be doing an updated deck profile while I'm running these. If you're serious about running this deck outside of the event, you should craft both of these. Because that is what you'll summon off it. You very rarely will ever summon Melfi Mommy off of it. And next we have number 64, Ronin Raccoon Sandayu. This has been MVP. This card has won me so many games. It's just two level 2 beast type monsters. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, special summon a raccoon token, and it's level one, attack question, defense zero. When summoned, its attack becomes equal to the current attack of the monster in the field that has the highest attack. Your choice will tie. While you control another beast type monster, this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. It's very easy to use the token effect and then make Mrs. Radiant to get another 500 more attack and beat over anything your opponent had on the field. Um, one of the things that's really funny about this is it doesn't like target anything, it just becomes the highest attack on the field. So if your opponent has like a beat stick that, let's just use Chaos Dragon Max as an example, has 4,000 attack, this still gets the 4,000 attack. It doesn't care that Chaos Max is unaffected. It still gets the 4,000 attack, you make Mrs. Radiant, you run it over. Next we have a Cat Shark, two level 2 monsters. Well this card has a material attached to it that's originally water, can't be destroyed by a battle. 
Once per turn, quick effect, detach material from this card. Target one, rank four, lower XYZ monster you control. Its attack becomes double its original attack and defense until the end of the turn. So you would typically use that on one of the Melfies. Uh, probably Joyous Melfi would be the one that you would do that to. We're not running it in this case. Two Melfi Mommy. Two plus uh, level two beast monsters. Once per turn, quick effect. You can attach a beast monster from your hand or face up field to this card's material. This card gains effects based on the number of materials attached to it. Three plus, can't be destroyed by battle. Four plus, you take no damage from battles involving this card. Five plus, when an attack is declared involving this card in an attack position monster, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to that attack position monster's attack. And then we have the two Mrs. Radiant. All earth monsters on the field gain 500 attack and defense. Wind loses 400 attack and defense. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one earth monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect to Mrs. Radiant once per turn. Then we have one Nightmare Cerberus, which is conveniently... It's earth, right? Yeah, it's conveniently earth, so you can actually use its effect. One Nightmare Phoenix, not earth. One Asa the Earth Charmer. One Tribrigage Frigit the Barrel Blossom. And one Sprite Elf, because if you notice, everything is level 2. And sometimes it's worth it to make it during your turn, not be able to use its effect, but use its effect during your opponent's turn. And yeah, let me know if you guys want to see a full um, deck profile for this, like outside of the event, with every attribute, without the event restrictions. Because if you do, I'll probably make one. And I'm going to leave you guys with some replays, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.